The Guild Trader system in the Elder Scrolls Online is unique among massive multiplayer online role-playing games. If you are new to the Elder Scrolls Online and have played other MMORPGs with auction houses, you may be confused with all of the auction houses scattered across the world. If you are new and want to know how to buy and sell things on the Guild Traders or a Guild Leader wanting to hire a trader, I am Benevolent Bodhi and I'm here to help. The Elder Scrolls Online Marketplace system is controversial and many players have strong opinions in favor and against the system. In this guide, I will explain how the Marketplace system works from the perspective of buyers, sellers, and guild leaders. Let's look at the basics of the Guild Trader system. First, it's integrated into the Guild system. Guilds with 50 or more members unlock a Guild Trader. When the guild unlocks a trader, it is available to its members by using any NPC banker, but not the assistants. Each member of the guild can list 30 items on the trader at one time. Since each guild can have 500 members, the maximum number of items on a trader is 1500 items. Additional steps are required for public access, which we will talk about next. In the Elder Scrolls Online, there are multiple markets. A guild provides public access to their trader by hiring a single guild trader that is situated in a city, wilderness location, or city outlaw's refuge. A guild can also provide public access by claiming resources or keeps in Cyrodiil. A guild member with appropriate guild permissions can talk to the resource or keep quartermaster to claim. Finally, the 200 plus public traders have a weekly silent auction hiring process. Guilds with 50 or more members can bid on up to 10 guild traders each week. A guild can only have one trader and additional bids are refunded after the guild trader auctions have completed. There is a defined transition process that occurs before and after the auctions are complete. Let's look at the buying process. Ideally, the buyer wants to find their items at the lowest price. However, with 200 plus traders out there, players will compromise and settle for the lowest price without a lot of traveling around. You can access markets from three places, a banker NPC, the guild trader, and a quartermaster of a claimed resource. Banker NPCs often found in main towns will offer a guild store option. Simply select the guild store option from the menu. Any of your guilds that have 50 plus members will have a trader. Note, guild masters can restrict access. There are approximately 200 plus guild traders. They are located in starter towns, main cities, overland crossroads, and alliance capitals. Check out the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages website for a complete list of guild traders. Here's how to find the banker and the traders on your in-game map. The banker has a chest icon and the guild traders have a guild tabard icon like the one shown here. When a keep or resource is claimed in Cyrodiil by a guild with 50 plus members, their guild market will be available to members of the guild's alliance from the quartermaster while control of the location is maintained. Regardless of the method used, the items purchased will be mailed to you and appear in the systems message section of your mailbox. Unfortunately, the mail isn't always delivered immediately. You can speed up the delivery process by traveling to a new zone or entering or exiting an outlaw's refuge. On your guild home tab, you will find out if your guild has any active traders or has claimed ownership of a place in Cyrodo. Here are a few buying tips. A useful website to find items at lower prices is Tamarel Trade Center. If you're not familiar with the price of a desired item, ask your guildies and check all of the traders in the area before purchasing. Add-ons can provide useful functionality if you're on PC. If you use add-ons, be aware of their limitations. Add-ons that collect sales data will only collect data from the guilds that you are a member of. Be aware that players may be manipulating prices by listing items to affect the average prices calculated by add-ons. Let's look at how to sell items on the guild traders. For a guild store to be unlocked and usable, it must have a minimum of 50 members. Players can list up to 30 items at one time. 
Items can be listed for a maximum of 30 days and expired items will be mailed to you. Unclaimed expired item mail messages will be deleted after 30 days. There is a 1% transaction listing fee payable when you list an item. A 7% sales tax is deducted when an item is sold. Half of this tax is deposited into the Guild Bank. Don't forget to price check your items before listing them so that your prices can be competitive. If you don't have access to a Guild Trader, you're limited to player-to-player -player trades. To attract customers, you will have to spam W2S wants to sell messages in Zone Chat. You can use the Guild Finder to filter trade guilds that are currently recruiting new members. Note, trading guilds often have membership requirements. Note, trade guilds often have membership requirements. These may include sales quotas, logging in regularly, paying a membership fee, or participating in weekly raffles. Here are some selling tips. Before listing an item, check the Guild tab to confirm that the Guild has a trader this week. Search your items before listing so that you can make sure that your prices are competitive. If you're not familiar with an item's price, ask your guildies for a price check. Take advantage of resources like Tamaral Trade Center for information on pricing. Popular and profitable items are usually the latest update goodies like motifs, furniture recipes, and meta equipment sets. Crafting improvement items are always in demand, particularly the gold ones like Druax, Cuda, Tempering Alloy, Chromium Plates, etc. If you're on PC, add-ons can provide useful sales functionality. Some of these features include splitting stacks, per unit pricing, and adding sales data to tooltips. If you talk to leaders of trading guilds, they will tell you that it's no small feat to secure a prestigious trader. Many guild masters and officers put their lives on hold once a week to ensure that a trader is secured for their guilds. Let's take a look at the hiring process. The guild trader hiring process is done by silent auction. You can place bids up to 10 traders a week. Bid costs are removed from the guild bank. If you've placed a bid on a trader, you can increase the bid up to the trader hiring day. Only guild members with view bid permissions can see bids. If you had one or more successful bids, your highest successful bid will be your trader for the week. If you have a guild tabard, the guild trader will wear your tabard for the duration of the week. All unsuccessful bids will be returned to the guild bank. In the rare event a trader is not hired, a higher option will appear on their menu and a fixed price will be shown. The weekly guild trader transition process is shown here. Five minutes before the reset, all bidding and renting from the previous week will stop. At reset, the tabards of all the traders will flip to their new owners. And five minutes after reset, all bidding and renting is opened up again for the following week. Wow, that was a lot of information. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching. If you didn't take notes, you'll find a link to the written guide on my website at benevolentfoldy.ca down below in the description. What did you think of the video? Did you smash the like button or post your comments below? Until next time, take care and keep playing video games.